I'm Molly and this is the 200 square foot tiny home where I've been living for the past two and a half years. Come on in. parts of this whole house is this rolling ladder and it tucks away pretty neatly um, it ends up coming out and then I can slide it across wherever I need it and I usually just put it in the middle when I'm going to bed and during the day I tuck it back to the side and when I need to I can just move this place, and then I can access my closet at one point during the pandemic I realized that I had nowhere to really sit down in my house except for the stool that I used for work and I wanted a place that was a little more loungy so I ended up finding this thing on Amazon I measured this space I wanted a bench that could fit within this cabinet space but not be too big and I also honestly just wanted a place to put this printer which I got for five dollars off Facebook marketplace so I had some storage for this I have some other office things in here and I turned this last one into a pantry for any leftover food that wouldn't fit elsewhere. And this way, I have an easy place to sit, read, journal, do whatever. I really enjoy having maps, and this one is the front range of the Wasatch here in Salt Lake City. So Salt Lake's over here, and then, I feel like a weather woman. Um, I'm just keeping track of everywhere where I've hiked or biked or backcountry skied. And it's a fun way for me to just see what I've covered and what I haven't and go explore new areas. This is my beautiful AC unit, which I love and need desperately. And <laughs> I decided to use this resourceful method to help channel the air up. Otherwise, it doesn't really get up to that loft very easily or at all. So this way I can at least have some cold air going up to the upper loft, especially at night. So this is the ladder that I designed and it works great. It's very simple. Just climb up this way. And then when I want to remove it, I, I just undo these carabiners. And I store it right over here. And then I have all this space. When I moved in, I knew I wanted to use the space to dance. So I created a little dance studio. And then I can roll back the carpet and I have all this room to dance. I'm so grateful for a kitchen with good storage. I have all my silverware in here. I keep some other big things down there. This is actually a blend of bath stuff and I've found out how to use layers so I can fit a whole lot in here. And then down here is actually back to kitchen things, different ingredients that I might need. Under the sink. Got all the things we need, including a tire iron. It's a tiny home on wheels. This is the fuse box. And here I have my fridge, my freezer, and sometimes I have to play Tetris to get everything to fit. Right now I'm pretty empty, but it works, it does the job. Then we have a nice oven, four burner stove, and it can fit a whole cookie sheet, which is great. And I keep all my pans under here. All my pots are actually up on the wall. I'll show you in a second. And then I have all my knives, some ingredients, microwave, which I don't actually use that often. Some more things, 
Ooh, I'm actually really proud of this. This was a wine glass holder, which I don't drink, so I don't need it. But I found this at Ikea and it didn't actually fit over here, which is where I thought it would. So I ended up putting it up here and this is where I have all my foldable or collapsible bowls. And these are pan lids, pot lids, and they're silicone and they work great and they're lightweight. And it's perfect for this space because I don't have a lot of room for a lot of pots and pan covers. So utilize the space pretty well. And my teapot, of course. This is where I put my compost. Got some other ingredients, my blender, and my pots and pans and measuring things. So it works well and I really love my kitchen. This is my bathroom and it's everything I need. Nothing more, nothing less. We have a compostable toilet, which uses no water. So I don't need a black water tank. This is where I keep my jewelry. We have some other bath items up here. And then we actually have a pretty good full size shower in here. And my pull out mirror, hi. So this comes out and we have the magnified side on here. And then when I don't need it, I just collapse it back. And when I have guests, then pull this out and it becomes the semi doorway. So there's a little bit of privacy when we need it. One of my favorite storage options has been this one. I got it at Ikea and it holds shoes and I ended up putting a bunch more other things in here and it's awesome. It's pretty thin. So it doesn't take up too much space. And this is where I keep my recycling by the door. A couple fold up seats for guests. When it comes to storage, I've had to get creative. So I blended my clothes in with some of my other storage. And these are all from Ikea. And I was able to organize some of my, all my things here. I keep everything pretty neatly folded so that I know where everything goes and it works quite well actually. Keep some pants, shorts, books, all the things. This is my mud room and I'm so glad to have it. You can see it stores a lot of things for me. And over here we have a little art and where I keep my shoes and extra jackets along the hooks on the wall. This house was built in Colorado and driven out here. So these are the tail lights. And they built a wooden skirt around the outside edge. These are the wheel wells. Um, and that helps insulate underneath the house during the winter time. These were built with extra insulation on the interior. I'm plugged into shore power actually at my neighbor's house down there. And so I get power from her there. We have water that's actually piped in directly to the house right there. And I have two eight gallon propane tanks. And unfortunately only one side of the regulator works right now. So I really just swap them out when one of them empties, but that helps me know when I'm getting low. And right now I have a full tank ready to go. So if it does run out, I'm ready to switch it out. That's my bedroom window and my kitchen window here. Along the side is the bathroom, the bedroom, and these cinder blocks are just holding up that wooden skirt so that animals don't get in. I ended up installing um, a window unit for AC. It gets pretty hot here in Utah, so um, we just kind of <laughs> made that work and it is so helpful, so helpful. You'll notice that there's uh, the sound of water. We have this gorgeous little creek floating behind the house and right next to it is our chicken coop where we have five gorgeous chickens who lay fresh eggs every morning for us. This is our gorgeous apple tree where we like to lounge and sit by our beautiful creek. This 
house also has two loft spaces. So I have a smaller loft that's over the front of the house, the mudroom. Um, it's a much smaller loft. Um, and when I first moved here, it was a lounge space where I had a cozy little pad and a, a, a light and some reading books. It was just a really sweet little nook. Um, and over time it's had to shift um, when I had to clean out my stuff from my parents' house. Um, it turned into storage because I needed some extra storage. Um, I also built um, a shed in the backyard and I measured everything to fit, um, to exactly fit my two bikes and a few tubs worth of my off-season stuff. So that has helped me manage my storage. So for some specs about the house, um, it's about 24 and a half feet long by seven and a half feet wide. It was built in Colorado by a company called Tumbleweed Homes, and then it was driven out to Salt Lake City. I believe the house cost about $80,000. I'm actually not the owner, I'm a renter. So uh, the house is currently parked in the backyard of someone's property and uh, my rent each month goes half to the woman who owns the property and half to the man who actually owns the home. I have water coming directly in and my power comes from the nearby house as well. So um, I get internet that's beamed from my neighbors and I have two eight gallon propane tanks. So that heats my water it heats my central heating in the winter. Um, I have a thermostat so I can just set it whenever it gets, you know, a certain temperature, it'll kick on and add some heat um, and it runs the stove. So there are times when, uh, especially in the winter time when I'm using my heat more, that I'll wake up and <laughs> one time I woke up and I could actually see my breath. It was so cold in the morning and that's when I realized my heat was out. So my first chore for that day was to take both my eight gallon tanks, go get them filled and come back and get it hooked up so I could have some heat again. A lot of people actually ask about the toilet. Um, it's a composting toilet, which means it doesn't use any water and it's a nature's head toilet, which worked really great. They're on boats, they're perfect for small spaces like this when you don't wanna have a lot of water tank, you know, switching out or you don't have a, a direct line to dump everything out. By design, it separates liquids from the solids, which minimizes the odor. You really, honestly, it doesn't smell bad at all. Um, maybe if I've gone four weeks and I haven't changed it out, then yeah, but that makes sense and I, I tend to do that. Um, the liquids actually has a separate compartment that I can take out and carry out to either my neighbor's toilet where I can dump it, or um, human urine has a lot of nitrogen in it, which is great for plants, so I will disperse it to some of our plants around the garden. The solid part, the toilet paper and everything else, um, that I empty probably every four weeks, and um, it's not just empty in there. I put a, about six or seven inches worth of peat moss on the bottom, and that helps deodorize it too. Um, and there's a spindle on the side of the toilet, so I will spin that each time I add anything to the solids. And that just helps kind of coat everything in that peat moss and really start to compost it. Um, the, typically you could put that into a garden. Um, you wouldn't want to use it for anything that you would be growing like vegetables, anything people would eat. Um, but it would be good for probably trees and other plants or bushes. Um, I believe it's best to let it compost for a few months before you actually use it as any kind of fertilizer for plants. But currently I wash it out outside. I dump, I put everything into a double bagged trash bag for the solids and kind of sweep everything in there. Um, and I throw that away and then I rinse out the whole toilet and then it's uh, add that peat moss layer and reassemble everything and then carry it back inside the house and, and I'm good to go for another about four weeks. My name is Molly King and the background story with the tiny home is that I've loved tiny spaces and nooks all my life. Um, I'm one of five kids, the youngest, and so I always found comfort in small spaces, um, you know, under the stairs at our old home growing up or just small cozy little areas. So. Um, I also played a lot in the woods growing up, and I think I was heavily influenced by the Boxcar Children series. 
um, of these kids who found an abandoned train car and kind of turned it into their little fort or home. So years ago, when I was going through a big life shift with, I left a corporate job and all these different things, um, some other things kind of fell through and all of a sudden I found myself at a loss of where I wanted to live and the tiny home movement was barely getting going. Um, I spent probably five months researching all about tiny homes or trailers or RVs, all the things. Um, I learned about black water tanks, gray water tanks, power, um, you know, how to really manage all the input and output of everything that takes energy. Um, and I thought I was going to go live in a tiny home right away. Um, turns out I ended up living in Breckenridge for a few more years, um, found a house with some friends and lived there and it came time for me to make a switch again and I had an opportunity to pursue my dance career here in Salt Lake City. So when I was moving to Salt Lake City, I remember thinking, oh, if I could live anywhere, I would love to live in a tiny home. Like just, it would be a dream come true. And when I looked, it was in November of 2018, when I looked online, all I could find were tiny homes for sale or um, kind of trailers to tow behind a car, which technically could work, but I knew the logistics that it takes to find a place to park, find a place legally to park, um, the dumping of, of the tanks and things like that. And I just, it didn't seem like that I didn't want that to be where I spent so much time figuring out my logistics. So I really wanted a tiny home that was stationary and I wouldn't have to worry about all those details. And lo and behold, a couple months later, um, I knew I was moving to Salt Lake City. I didn't know where. And I was on Facebook Marketplace and I ended up finding this tiny home. And I fell in love just right away. I was like, this is what I want. I don't want to keep looking. This is it. <laughs> Um, so I ended up c contacting the seller, um, who's my neighbor, her name's Nikki, and, um, and she and I finally connected. I, I found out later that she had probably, she had a ton of interest in the tiny home, probably 40 people asking her about it and setting up calls and trying to see who would be a good fit. Um, and because she has little kids and this beautiful plot of land, she really wanted to have someone here who would be safe. <laughs> Um, but she told me her intention for this home was to have a space that would really support gratitude and healing and creative creativity and um, really just serve as a springboard to support someone in what they were doing. So when I told her that I was um, a traveling dancer and that I would be competing and traveling almost every weekend and finishing a book, um, it just seemed like a really good fit. And it's funny. When we talked on the phone for the first time, I remember she offered everything up kind of as a problem of just like, uh, well, it has a composting toilet and that's a little, you know, different for people. And I was like, that's great. I've done some outdoor ed and one of the programs where I worked um, had composting toilets, so I'm used to them and I, no big deal. And I love camping, so whatever. Um, she's like, well, I have chickens and they're right next to the tiny homes. So they're kind of you know, and I was like, that's awesome. My sister used to have chickens, that's so great. Um, and she's like, well, I have little kids and they're kind of, you know, all over the place. And I was like, that's awesome. I have seven nieces and nephews, love kids. And if you want help with, you know, maybe just tidying up after bedtime or putting them to bed or whatever, like I'm happy to help. So it just became this like really beautiful meshing of everything. And she ended up offering me, uh, this place to live right in that first phone call and I was so excited so excited um, I ended up moving out about three weeks later February 1st of 2019 and I arrived late on a Friday night with um, everything that I owned in my forerunner packed to the gills and um, and I showed up and I remember walking in here and it was perfect it was everything I wanted and it was bigger than I thought it would be actually. Um, so I was really grateful for that. And um, I spent the next couple weeks kind of getting settled. I went to Ikea, I measured everything and got the right furniture that I wanted and figured out all these storage solutions. Um, and it's just been a beautiful unfoldment ever since.
In 2019, my dance partner and I were teaching here in Salt Lake City every week and traveling almost every other weekend. We attended over 20 different competitions um, all around the country. We were teaching, judging, performing, competing, and I was home probably on average three to four days a week, um, which meant that the few days that I was here, I needed to meal prep, do my laundry at the laundromat, um, go see a few specialists for some injuries that I was dealing with, um, wash and repack everything and plan my next trip and make sure that I had all my ticket. Like it was super busy and I didn't really feel like I was home a whole lot. I was basically home Tuesday through Thursday or Monday through Thursday. Um, so it was just a really big whirlwind year. And come 2020, we were scheduled to have a very similar schedule and if not more busy. And then COVID hit, of course, and all of a sudden I found myself in here full time, like full time. <laughs> so um, that really was a good test on whether or not I liked living in this kind of space before I could kind of like come in and out and it was just a really nice place to throw my stuff and reorganize and hit the road again. But um, 2020 became the year of really living in the tiny home full time. So um, I just, I grew to love it even more. It's the perfect size for me. I can have a workspace, I have this lounging space, I have a pop-up dance studio, um, and it just became such a, a sweet refuge um, from everything that was happening, and it was my safe cocoon to write and work on my own projects, and um, I'm so grateful that I've gotten to live here. I'm actually filming this on the day that I'm starting to move out. Um, ironically, this is my last week in the tiny home here and I'm moving to a 24 foot RV. So that will be another adventure, maybe another video later on. Um, but I, I just wanted to really commemorate this chapter and honor it because it's been such a sweet place. And something that I love about tiny home living is that it really helps me be very intentional about what I bring into this space, both physically and mentally. Um, you know, I only have so much room <laughs> to put my things and it's kept me disciplined on not acquiring too much stuff, um, not, not buying things just to buy them. Like if I have enough Tupperware, I'm done. I don't need to buy new Tupperware. Or um, same with clothes or whatever it is. It's kind of like if I bring something new into the space, then I need to donate something else so that I have room. It's been a really um, a good way to keep me in line with realizing what's important to me and it's not really about material things. Um, I do spend money on gear. Um, I have two bikes and backcountry skis and things like that but then I take really good care of my gear because when it comes to that kind of thing if you take good care of your gear your gear takes good care of you. So I've just been really mindful about what I'm bringing in and what I'm purchasing because I don't wanna just, you know, buy things and throw it away or donate it right away. I wanna buy things that last. One of my favorite parts, I keep saying that, but I have a lot of favorite parts because I love this house. Um, I love when it rains. It has a tin roof with some insulation, so it's not just straight tin roof, but the sound of rain in this house is just the best and I'll light a candle and make some tea and get a book and go up to my loft and get cozy with a blanket and pillows and just have, uh, it's just heavenly and I love it in here. There was a, a gathering at one point. We had um, an event in the front part of the property with a lot of people and people would kind of drift back into the backyard and inevitably stumble upon the tiny home. And, um, at one point we had, I think I counted 16 people inside this tiny home, including, I mean, several of them were little kids, but we had, you know, four or five up in the small loft, four or five over here, and then we had kind of standing room only down on the bottom floor. And I mean, this house can, can fit 16 people. Um, and it was a little crowded, but it was a lot of fun. Um, another party we had, uh, a few people kind of scattered about and we were able to do some West Coast Swing partner dancing in the middle of the floor, which was a lot of fun. 
Um, this house is surprisingly roomy. A lot of people will walk through the front door and kind of marvel at how much space there actually is. And that's one thing I love about it too. It's, it's not as small as it might seem. Thanks so much for coming by and I hope you liked my tour.